What's going on YouTube? Today I'm taking the Briss boat out and I've had a lot of people ask me how I transport it. Usually depends how far I'm going. If I'm going really far, I'll put a, a strap here and a strap there going across the ratchet strap. And back here, I do have a transom saver right here. It's bolted in to the main frame there. And also the transom is actually sitting on this. So no weight is really on the transom itself when I'm traveling. Also I have two straps there and then a bungee cord to keep it from, from bouncing around. And also I put in some new seats. I think they turned out pretty good. I more so wanted them for the storage inside somewhere to put the battery and just anchor and everything else and then the gas tank is down here so i'm taking it out i put the uh transducer mount right here and it just folds down and it's a quick release so i'm gonna see how that works compared to back here on the transom where the left side was getting interference with the motor because there's just not a lot of room back here to uh transmit it so go ahead and put it in the water and uh see what happens Here's what the trailer looks like without the boat on it. I basically stripped it down to this frame and then I added all these bunks to perfectly fit that boat. And then that is a, fits right on the transom. And that thing is pretty easily removable. I thought in case it got in the way, I could lower it or raise it or just take it off. And then I put another bunk right here to support the front. And this is basically a bow stop. So when I'm pulling in, I can just know that I'm in the right spot to get it all chained up. So that's it. All right, we are going. It's actually pretty windy out here. We've got the sonar going. It says we're in 14 feet of water. I swear last year when I was in here, this was like six. We're just gonna cruise. Sonar seems to be working. Got this black here, that's the land there. I'm going 70, oh geez, I'm 140 feet out. I need to make that a little smaller. Go 65 feet on each side. The side imaging seems to work really well on the side there. Going under a train bridge. Looks a little choppy. That's so cool. Obviously it works better when it's two to three miles an hour. The boat seems a lot smaller when I'm actually on the water compared to when it's in my garage. But I mean, as you can see, I can fit quite a bit of stuff on here. Look at that big pile of fish. Right there. That's crazy. I believe this area is full of Asian carp. Correct me if I'm wrong. You know, the ones that jump up in your boat and you're cruising through here. Look at all those. All right, we're gonna see how fast I can get on plane on this little boat. I actually did it really slow 
because I'm by myself and I don't want anything bad to happen. It, I think I was at like 10 miles per hour for maybe 10, 20 seconds. I mean, obviously if I opened it up the full throttle, I could probably get on, on plane in, in five seconds. But I mean, as you see, I got, I got some gear in here. I got a cooler bag and then a Pelican box. The battery is in here, so I got got some pretty good weight. There's a freaking fish. Pretty good weight in the front of the boat. And me, I'm only 140 pounds. So, really not bad. Let's see if I can catch one of these fish jumping. There's one. There they are, look at that. All right, I'm gonna send the drone up from a boat like I said I'm going half throttle like just kind of opening it up a little at a time rather than just take it off 10 miles an hour I'm on plane That made me super nervous. I thought it was gone. That scared me. Apparently 17% battery is uh, starts to go home by itself. And I'm a moving target, so it's not really exactly gonna go back to where I was precisely in the water. So I had to cancel it. But the sensors on it keep it from going towards anything. So if I was bringing it toward me it wanted to back away Ooh, that was a close one but I made it that would have been a five hundred dollar mistake jeez but I got it well, that gave me my adrenaline for the day I honestly did not think I was getting that back I think it's even harder is when uh you got the sun fighting you. You can't really see on the screen, so you have to physically look at the drone. I don't think I'll be doing that again. Not unless someone else is on the boat. Because that was pretty good skills. And I didn't crash. Things you do to get good footage. I'm usually scared to bring that thing above water. I don't know why. I mean gonna fall from 300 feet in the water or the ground it's gonna break either way that current coming through here it's the main channel right out there
So this is the main channel of the Mississippi. Pool 21. Lock and Dave 21 is down that way. Maybe two miles. Lock and Dave 20 is that way, I believe about 15, 16 miles. This just looks huge out here, being on a little boat. But my boat floats, so I should be good. to point out when I'm when I put these things on I made them pretty much the exact width of the boat and then when I pull up I, I hook this on to it and basically just ratchet up the two feet but I mean I didn't move it at all I just pulled that up and it sits in between here so it sits perfectly on these bunks I can kind of see the corner of the seam sits on that one. The corner of the seam sits on that one. And it's perfectly centered. These are pretty much hard fixed. And they come off actually, so that allows these to spin freely. So when I'm going up, it can spin with it rather than just drag on it. So it makes loading the boat really easy. You don't have to center it. It's kind of self-centering, so. That's a wrap for today. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Let me know if you have any questions about this boat or anything I may have showed you that you may have additional questions about. I'm beat. The wind was unbearable at times and the water was, was really choppy. Honestly, for this bay, it's the choppiest I've ever seen it. Mm -hmm.